Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Stando TV, and today I want to talk to you guys about my biggest frustrations with YouTube since the apocalypse and everything going around on YouTube and how it's evolving and what I plan to do about it. Um, so yeah, let's talk about my YouTube channel for a minute. I started my YouTube channel in the, the summer of 2013, um, and since then, I have gained 241 subscribers and 40,000 views. And I know that that doesn't sound like a lot of growth when you think about it. However, there was a lot I didn't know heading into YouTube. Like I didn't know how to edit videos. I wasn't, you know, it, it was a learning process. I didn't, I didn't know uh, good titles for my videos. I didn't know proper uh, meta tags for my videos. No, I didn't always take full advantage of the description system and, and, and things like that. And since then, you can see where the production value has steadily increased and I've learned what I'm doing uh, over time. And really within the past 18 months, is when I've got the bulk of the subscribers that I currently have, which is about 200 of you. <laughs> 200 of you have followed within the past 18 months, and that's where I feel that my channel has um, really found its place on on the platform. Uh, even though you know it's still a very small channel, I feel comfortable with the content that I'm putting out and proud of the content that I've been putting out. That being said, let's take a look at my channel. Like I said, 241 subscribers, 200 of which have probably come within the last 18 months, uh, which is awesome. And I appreciate all you guys who come out and watch the videos and support me, of course. Um, so yeah, here recently, YouTube has had to go through some changes, mainly because, well, uh, some bad things were happening to the platform. and. While I agree with what YouTube has decided to do uh, about it, uh, I don't necessarily in entirely agree with their implementation. Uh, for example, advertisers, if you weren't aware, advertisers were starting to pull away from the platform because they saw their ads being placed on some extremist, controversial content. And I'm not talking necessarily about video gaming content. I'm not talking about like fun adult humor content. I'm talking about um, terrorist recruitment videos. We're getting Coca-Cola ads, uh, things along that nature, which were bad. And that's why the advertisers started pulling away from YouTube. And I agree, YouTube really had to do something drastic about this and make their, their platform more advertiser friendly. I totally am down with that and understand what is going on. But at the same time, some people are getting hit that don't deserve to be hit. And fortunately, uh, my channel has only been hit once like that. And for the reason is um, this Horizon Zero Dawn review uh, got struck uh, for not being advertiser friendly. And I didn't understand because I have put some pretty racy stuff up on my channel before, some pretty controversial uh, videos up on my, my my channel before, and those weren't demonetized. But this Horizon Zero Dawn review was demonetized. And I thought, well, what was wrong with it? And I, I rewatched the video and I didn't really swear. There was no swearing in the video. It was just an honest opinion of the game itself. Um, some of you have probably watched the video. If you haven't, you can go check it out yourself and and decide for yourself whether it was whether I said something controversial in there or not. But I'm pretty sure it was just an analysis of the game. Um, well, nothing there was controversial. Uh, the title, obviously, Horizon Zero Dawn review, not controversial at all. It's the name of the game, and it says review. So that's what it is. It's it's an opinion piece. Uh, the thumbnail I don't think is controversial. It's it's a landscape view uh, from within the game. You have uh, uh, Aloy looking out. She's not even armed. Her bow is across her back. She's not holding it as if she's fixing to uh, fire upon something. She's not being attacked by one of the robotic monsters. And it's got the title and it says review. So I don't think the thumbnail is controversial. 
Uh, I read the description. It says Guerrilla Games makes a splash by making its first open world role playing game. How did they do? I've spent an astonishing amount of time in Horizon Zero Dawn, and this is my review. Um, yeah, nothing controversial there. Hmm. And then, of course, my social links and things like that. Uh, look at my tags. It's basically descriptors for the game itself. Uh, and I, I felt pretty good uh, about this uh, video. And I thought it was going to do well because, it, as you can see, my actionable SEO score, things that I control, was a 43.7 out of 50. Of course, performance-wise, it's a, a 48.7 out of 100. Uh, of probably what you know the potential it had to do and, and how well the video performed compared to all my subscribers and and, and things like that uh, the reason that this video did not perform better than it did you know it's got 45 views five likes and two comments and i'm 100 percent sure that this video was only watched by current subscribers because the video was demonetized, it doesn't go into a, a, suggested, uh, a suggested watch uh, list. So nobody's going to be suggested anywhere on the platform to watch this video. Uh, it's, it's, it, even when you finish watching a, uh, uh, somebody else's video uh, or their Horizon Zero Dawn review, like my video is never going to show up in the suggested uh, watch next list. Of, of videos there because it was demonetized so this video probably has received the maximum amount of views that it will ever achieve and that's kind of unfortunate because i, I felt really good about this one uh considering that i did a review in progress before that and it did uh a, a lot better matter of fact we can look at that as well horizon zero dawn ghost recon wildlands review in progress almost a thousand views 10 likes four dislikes and it, it performed way better so i thought that my horizon zero dawn would at least you know uh the review get get better performance uh, especially with with the tags one of the things about doing tags and stuff like that is it's a a hit or miss type of thing so there is that and uh but you know it's youtube's platform whatever uh, people say suggested for manual review. I did. It's under review. See right there. Uh, it's been under review for a few months now because one of the problems is, is that the uh, manual review system, the way it works is here on YouTube. You have a robot that goes in and checks everything, right? Uh, you have a robot that goes in and, and checks for what's controversial what's not controversial it's an ai and i understand it's a learning process but to get that manual review the video has to reach at least 1000 views and the only way for the video to reach 1000 views is if it's if you're a small channel like mine is if it's in the suggested view area which it's never going to be if it's been demonetized so that's a little frustrating and and really it's it's very guys th this takes the wind out of myself it really does it's very discouraging uh to a content creator because <clears throat> i want to make videos but I want my videos to reach the maximum audience that they can reach. And I understand I'm the smallest guy on the totem pole and I'm not going to have the same reach as say uh, uh, a Philip DeFranco or a uh, Boogie 2988 or uh, an Angry Joe or somebody like that who has millions upon millions of subscribers. I understand that and I get that. I have to work my way up and I feel like uh, it's a slow grind and that's why I'm pretty proud of my subscriber numbers even though I only have 241 and 200 of those have came within the past 18 months and on YouTube starting out and finally getting serious about YouTube I think that's a pretty impressive number considering how many people use the platform how much uh, videos are being uploaded to the platform I was pretty impressed with that 200 subscriber count number okay um, especially after I started getting serious because there for a long time, uh, I gave up on, on 
of making videos and it became a Twitch highlight dumping ground. And like I said, I got back into making videos eight, uh, 18 months ago, getting serious about it. And the channel has continued to grow ever since and something to be proud of. Uh, another problem is is you see some of these like includes copyrighted content um, These this is happens every time I decide to talk about Nintendo does the Nintendo switch need to third-party triple-a games um, Usually I can get a copyright claim maybe when I talk about Konami uh, Konami is pretty good about uh, Taking down their claim 24 to 48 hours after dispute uh, when you prove to them that you're using their content in fair use and uh, I, I, I do dispute these Nintendo claims as well, but they always come back denied. So that's a problem. And the only what see Nintendo here on YouTube has the Nintendo partnership program. And what that means is in order to show anything Nintendo, you have to be part of this partnership program or they will claim and uh, copyright claim. Now, this is unfortunate because that means if you sign up for this program the nintendo partnership program of course i've explained this several times on my channel before but bear with me guys that means you at, you get what's left after youtube takes all of what's theirs right as far as ads go and then with the nintendo partnership now you've got a second hand taking in quite a big chunk out and the so your, your, your slice of the pie just got a little bit smaller as a content creator. And what's really, really frustrating about that is YouTube is allowing a third party company to dictate what is and what is not fair use on their platform. Because if you guys have watched my videos in the past, when I've talked about Nintendo, usually I saw show a small snippet of the trailer or a small snippet of some of their marketing materials. And I only use it as a visual to say this is what game I'm talking about or this is what company I'm talking about this is what they do and it's never included any of their licensed music um, and it always has commentary there's never any sound from their games or from their trailers being used uh, it's always with commentary over it and it still gets claimed and that that's hugely frustrating and you guys can say, well, you, dude, you're, you're not going to make a whole lot of money anyway because you're so small and, and blah, blah, blah. It's not about the money, okay? I could give a shit less about the money. This is about me reaching the highest potential uh, views possible for my channel. And I know my channel is capable of it because we have uh, some videos on here. Even though videos are hit or miss, some videos um, have reached thousands and thousands of views so i know my channel is capable of getting that reach but it these videos can't because they're not being monetized because they're copyright content or they're deemed for for whatever reason uh non-ad friendly which is i still don't understand why my horizon zero dawn review is deemed um unad friendly but the thing is is youtube's not going to promote a video unless it's going to make them money they're not going to put it on su a suggestive watch list unless they're going to earn revenue from it so even if you're trying to be ad free and keep this in mind um you've got to have a bigger reach somewhere else to promote your videos because youtube's not going to promote your video unless you're running ads on it and they're going to make some sort of revenue or profit off of it that's just how that works unfortunately and i get it i understand it it's business and i understand why the ad apocalypse has happened and 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 things like that it's just frustrating and i feel discouraged not because of their idea of what they're trying to do but how it's implemented right uh the implementation is just piss poor and i understand that there is a learning curve for ais and things like that but there are much larger channels than mine like i said you you got your you much larger channels that are being hit way harder than my small ass channel is and how discouraging is that when you're making videos and you're not reaching your max potential audience
So what am I going to do about it? Now you're looking at my Twitch channel and on Twitch, I started my Twitch channel one year after my YouTube channel, a whole year went by. Uh, and I, I have made 2,359 followers here on Twitch. Um, I've been in the, uh, suggestive Twitch channels, uh, a few times. Uh, it, it's been pretty cool and appreciate uh, Twitch for doing that. Um, there are some new tools that have got me excited about um, the, the Twitch as well. Uh, for example, the, the, this information feed on my channel where I can post videos or I can post like uh, news, uh, events uh, that, I, that I plan on doing, Twitch clips. Um, updates. Sorry, guys, I'm still battling the flu. No stream today. You know, things like that. I really love this feature of communicating with my audience and 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 promoting um, some events and videos and stuff uh, through my channel feed. I really love this feature. Uh, another feature that Twitch has added is their own upload system uh, and their own playlist system and things like that. And I uploaded a few videos here just to see how well they will do here on Twitch. And although that they're not pulling in the same numbers that I would see from YouTube uh, necessarily, I think that's because I uploaded, they were already uploaded to YouTube and people who had seen those videos had seen those videos and they're not going to watch it a second time or third time. Maybe not. Uh, but these videos did get some views and I think that's pretty cool. So you had some people who probably didn't catch the video on YouTube. So this is where what I want to do in the future moving forward comes into play and, and how I want to address my frustrations and stuff. I like making the pre-recorded content and I'm not going to quit YouTube. I'm not going to leave YouTube. However, YouTube content may not come as often as it has in the past for a little while. I want to focus more on live streaming. I still want to do the pre-recorded content, but when I upload the pre-recorded content, I want to upload it here on Twitch. And my idea is, is that I experiment with how well these videos will do just solidly on Twitch and not on YouTube at all. Just an experimentation. And I want to do this for a few months at least. Uh, just experiment around and, and see how well the videos perform here on Twitch. So if you guys want to continue to support me over the next uh, little bit, uh, you can get, head over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash Nando TV. Uh, give me a follow. Uh, one of the cool things is, is that you can get push alerts uh, if you have them enabled on my channel and get uh, updated every time I upload a video or every time I start a live stream. Uh, you can also get email alerts every time that there's activity on my channel. And that's pretty cool. So there's two ways to get notified. Uh, I know YouTube works pretty much the same way. Plus, I can post this stuff out on Twitter if you follow me over at Stando TV. Plus, this will get reposted to my website, of course, StandoTV.com. Um, so there's several ways for you guys to check out what I'm doing. Um, the content that I do here on Twitch is daily. Uh, so there is always something going on. Uh, I live stream five days out of the week. If I'm not, if I'm not on my own stream, I'm on uh, one of my friends streams and you can come check that out. Uh, so that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff going on on Twitch. Um, since I have been a Twitch and affiliate and I became a Twitch affiliate in April, um, and even though it's not all about the money, there are more incentivizations to do this and to at least test it and try it and experiment with it. Because like I said, I became a Twitch affiliate in April. And since April, I have made probably four times the amount of money that I've ever made on YouTube. And that's just through the affiliate program that that doesn't even count. Um, that doesn't even count direct donations through the Streamlabs PayPal link. 
that doesn't even count patrons at all. And that doesn't count um, video games that were donated to the stream, uh, people uh, donating digital codes. Uh, that uh, doesn't count any of it. That's just bits for watching ads and subscribers and Twitch token subscribers. And and so far, it has been more profitable here on Twitch. And uh, there's more incentive to be here on Twitch. And I have mentioned that on the YouTube channel in the past. And that's another reason that I want to experiment and just see where this takes me. Um, there are a few other creators uh, quite a few other creators that are making the same move and uh i just want to see um if this can become a thing if if i get here on the ground floor of twitch trying to become a competitor with youtube how much better would my twitch channel be than if i was solely exclusive to youtube now I'm probably still going to put content out on the YouTube channel over the next few months. It's probably not going to be as often as I put up exclusive content here on Twitch. And it will probably be clips and highlights or very important videos that I think should be shared in both places. But as far as exclusive content, don't expect any for the next few months as I try to experiment and see what becomes of me trying to uh, grow my audience. I will never leave YouTube completely, but I do think that Twitch is just a better tool for my, for what I am doing, for, for, you know, for me. Obviously, this wouldn't be the same for someone who has a larger, like, let's say Angry Joe has, I don't, I don't know how many current subscribers he has right now, but let's say he has 6 million on YouTube. And on Twitch, he has one million. Obviously, it wouldn't be a smart Joe, a uh, smart idea for Joe to do this, because he has a larger audience on YouTube as a platform than he does on Twitch. But for me, the smaller channel, the one that has a larger channel already on Twitch than on YouTube, this just seems like a smart play. This seems like taking advantage of the the reach the audience and the tools available to me. And I hope you guys understand that. And I hope you guys uh, are supportive uh, rather than frustrated. But if you are frustrated, I understand your frustrations. And I hope that you can uh, manage those frustrations for at least a few months just to see how things pan out. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm still going to be making content. It's just, going to be content on a different platform <laughs> and the content that i do send on youtube might be kind of different than what you've been used to so anyway guys uh, i hope you understand where i'm coming from and i hope you understand uh, why i have made the decision that i have made and i hope that many of you have uh, been positively supporting in the past, continue to positively uh, support me moving forward and my decisions and, and hopefully understand where they're coming from. But until then, guys, uh, remember that I really do love your faces and I really do appreciate each and every single one of you. And hopefully you guys can make the move to Twitch. I mean, it's, it's just a different website. I mean, uh, check it out. I, the community is, from what I have found so far, a lot, a lot better. And it, it overall, there's, I'm not, I'm not going to say there's not trolls on Twitch, but I encounter them less often than I do on YouTube is what I'm saying. So, uh, there's, there's less negative feedback on Twitch and there's more negative feedback on, on YouTube and, and things like that. It's, it's just... It's just a move that I feel is wise at the moment to make. And hopefully you guys can 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 make the move with me. And I invite you to do so. Till then, guys. Till the next time uh, we cross paths. Remember that I love your faces and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.